Today we're going to be looking at adjustment layers in Photoshop and we've got a stock image here to try them all out on. Uh, we're just going to be going through them and having a look, seeing what they do and working on why and where they might be useful for you in your artwork. So let's start with the top left. This is the brightness contrast and as you can see it does what it says on the tin. The brightness slider here and the contrast and that improves the blacks and whites in the image to really give it more pop. Of course with all of these adjustments you can not only use the sliders you can change the opacity on the layers and of course you have a layer mask down here so if I'm going to just make a selection there fill in the layer mask you can really see the difference there between the two the two sides there of course on the right here we've got with the adjustment applied and on the left we have the before image so let's just take it back and reduce that's the brightness contrast now the layers is another adjustment that can help focus on your brightness and your contrast as you can see by shifting this middle stopper we can adjust brightness and by these stoppers on the side we can alter how much exposure is in the image Then here of course you've got lightness and darkness this is another option that photographers use in particular. Now what's great about the levels adjustment is that you can also alter the individual channels of your image. So if we tweak these stoppers you can start to see that we've got a bit of a Lomography inspired colouring coming through there. That can help to add a little bit of drama or make your image look a bit more vintage. Of course the curves is another adjustment that does a very similar thing, however it looks completely different as you can see. We have the uh, histogram in the middle here and the top right hand corner we have the whites and the bottom left we have the blacks. In the middle we have the midtones and we have brighter mid-tones up here, darker mid-tones and the same down here so you can really get hands on with the with the curves adjustment here all you have to do to create a bit of contrast is create a sort of S shape like so So if you click and drag to apply, you can add as many stops as you like and simply hit delete to get rid of one. That's one too many. And as with le levels, you can change the individual channels. Now, the curves adjustment is particularly good for changing channels because it's very, as I say, very hands on and this can really unify the colours in your image and as mentioned it can create quite a vintage effect and there you can see we've got a much sunnier kind of feel to your image than we did before so yeah that's the curves um, exposure another photography based based adjustment as you can see the main exposure setting is your most useful one in this particular adjustment but of course you've got offset which can alter lightness and darkness and the gamma correction and the gamma correction to all intents and purposes reduces the number of colours in the image should you wish to and what's useful about the exposure adjustment is that we have a few little presets here, for plus one, plus two, minus one and minus two. 
So yeah, that's the exposure. Vibrance and saturation now, then this is another adjustment that's particularly good for digital artists. The vibrance you can see you can change the colouring in your image. As you can see it can make your image look a lot more brighter, a lot more saturated, but it doesn't have quite the same fringing that you would have if you turned up the saturation. These two sliders are great in conjunction with one another because you can up the saturation. You can even down the uh, move the saturation down, sorry, and the vibrance up, and that can cre create quite a nice toning to the image, like so. Very simple adjustment there, but it's one that can just add a final pop to your image, should you wish. On similar lines we've got the hue saturation. Now the hue saturation can control, funnily enough, hue, the saturation of your image, and the lightness. And by using the colorize you can create a sort of photo filter, should you wish, but we're not going to go with that just yet. Now What's great about the hue saturation is that you can select individual shades from your image, such as the cyan. If we look at the sky up here, and we want to boost the sky, as you can see, you can give it a little bit of focus just by just by adjusting the individual channels there. Um, and if you know you want to select a little bit more from your colour, then just use these. Now we've got a bit of cyan, a bit of green on the bottom here. As you can see, it's just boosted a little bit more of the of the colour, but it's left out the blue right through to the magenta and red and orange in the image. It's just the yellows and the greens and the and the blues. Uh, cyan, sorry. That are, that are adjusted there. As with other adjustments, there are usefully these little presets. Sepia is a, is a popular one. You can boost the red in your image. That looks quite good. And uh, yeah, this is a, another, another really popular final flourish for a digital artist as it can give your image a little bit more saturation at the end um, and you have a little bit of control over where you boost the saturation which is good. Colour balance now, let's look at the colour balance. Now similar to the the curves and the levels this is an adjustment that focuses on the individual channels of your image. So if you want to boost the blues, the mid-tone blues or yellows as a slider for that, for example. All you have to do is select a, a tone first. Now this can be really useful for you know going through your image and saying okay well the highlights we want it to look a lot more yellow. There you go you can just change it there. This is a particularly strong adjustment for colour selection and you'll find a lot of artists use this but as with many of the adjustments it's really just a case of whichever weapon of choice you prefer you might prefer to use the curves for example and get a little bit more visual with how you apply your your colours colour balance however is a lot more a lot more controlled, a lot more numbers based. It's just a case of preference I guess. That's the colour balance. Let's look at black and white. Now, black and white as you may imagine turns your image to monochrome. However, where you might be surprised is that you can actually change individual shades of colour in your image. This is particularly useful. Just 
good monochrome images aren't just simply images that have been desaturated. You can increase the contrast, you can really get technical in where the tones, which tones should be, which shades of, of grey. And you can use a tint, so you can go with a sepia tone should you wish. The presets, of course, the infra infrared one is a particularly nice effect. Lots of contrast going on in this image now. And of course, maximum white and maximum black. Great options, particularly if you wish to draw around uh, an image. If you wish to create a digital painting. So onwards with the photo filter, we explored the um, colorize option in hue saturation. Photo filter is very similar. You have your density along the bottom, and you have your color, and that's simply all it is. Now this is one again that is great for applying as a final layer. Um, and it's really good because if you have a colder background, for example, you can add in your your warmer colour or vice versa. As you can see, it's good for it's good for photos, but if I can just quickly show you, we're just gonna make a very, very quick mask of this. As you can see, I'm just erasing around the mask, just around the subject, just so that the only thing that the photo filter is focusing on is our subject. And it's very, very subtle. If I zoom in, you'll probably be able to see better. Can you see it's ever so slightly warmer? There we go. So now we've got a warm subject. I'm just going to Alt or Opt drag that photo filter layer to the top. I'm going to Command or Control I to invert the mask. And now if I go with a cooling filter, you can really see now the subject standing out against the background. Of course, that's not the neatest that uh, that you can manage, but really demonstrates the point I feel. Okay, let's move on. Channel Mixer. Now we've looked a bit at channels via the curves adjustment and of course colour balance sort of touches on that too. But there is also the option if you wish to get really technical with the percentages of you know how much red and green and blue you want in each channel. Channels of course are along here. These are the channels. You can choose to alter the channels individually. This isn't one of the more popular adjustments that you'll find in tutorials but nevertheless you might find that it works for you can produce some nice colour options, especially if you're somebody who likes to get meticulous about details and the percentages along the slider, they can really be for you when it comes to altering your colours towards the end of the project. Next along the line we've got Colour Lookup. Now, Colour Lookup is perfect for a final filter. Think of it as an Instagram-like like adjustment. So we've got some Fuji cameras along here. If you're a photography nerd, you'll no doubt want to explore these. And then we've got some more sort of artistic ones. Up here we've got Crisp Warm. Crisp Winter. Further down we've got Horror Blue. It's quite a cinematic finish I feel on there. Moonlight. 
and of course all of these options can really blend in your colours completely especially if you've used very disparate elements in a composition or digital painting in the abstract drop down menu you'll find other options we're going to we're going to actually uh, talk about something similar to this effect in a minute. You can simply just up the lightness or decrease the lightness and of course a sepia tone. And of course if you wish you can load your own adjustments. So that's colour lookup. Invert. Invert is probably the simplest of all the adjustments as you can see no options for invert and that is because it just inverts all the colors what does invert mean it takes every single pixel in the image and displays the reverse now you might be wondering why would i use the invert when i can simply just command or control i well as you can see here masking capabilities if you wish to only invert part of your image then that's where masking can come in and of course if you reduce the opacity of the layer there we have neutral grey because it's 50% and every every pixel has gone for its polar opposite and of course it's only half of the polar opposite of each pixel, so neutral grey. You can produce some interesting effects from here. That's invert. It's quite simple. But it can be used in some quite sophisticated artwork if you know when to use it. Posterize next. Now, posterize may look very subtle, and that's because it is. As you can see, it reduces your layer to however many levels you wish. Of course, the more levels you use, the less use it really is. There's no real reason to have 255 levels because that's how many shades of hue, of each hue, you have. The further you reduce it down though, the more low res your image will become. You might think this isn't a particularly impressive effect and it's not something you particularly want to use. Well, if you're taking a start image such as this one and you wish to draw around the individual blocks of colour, that's when posterize can really come into its own because it provides a, a perfect guide layer. Here we can see we've got three very distinct shades of colour along with the, the white colour up here and that would make it, for instance, very easy to create a cartoon style illustration of this layer. Hence the name, Posterize. Now similar to Posterize, we have Let's get rid of that one. Threshold. Now you may have seen this earlier. It's an effect from the, uh, the colour lookup adjustment. Threshold is very similar to, to posterize, but where posterize will only reduce your layer to, you know, a few shades. Threshold will reduce it simply to black and white. As you can see, you can create some nice effects, and it is particularly good for drawing onto. But where it can be really good to use is from masking again. I'm just going to do this very quickly to show you, just to demonstrate how to use it. Now, of course, you can see I have drawn around the subject to really get the uh, the details out of the hair there. Let's just adjust that slightly more. There we go, perfect. I'm going to drag it to the top again and invert. 
of course the mask isn't completely perfect due to the the soft brush that I masked with. However, if I then start to fade in the the mountains again via the threshold button, you can see that I've managed to get some detail in the hair and in the mountains. And by using masking, you can completely turn an image into black and white and choose where you want the, the detail to be. So that can be quite useful, especially if you're going for something very low poly as well. Selective colour. Now, selective colour is another favourite of the digital artist, as many of the colours, uh, colour adjustments tend to be. And, as you can see, it's pretty similar to some of the other the adjustments that we've we've seen so far. It's quite similar to the hue saturation, except you have far more control over the individual shades. You can increase the cyan, magenta, yellow and black. And of course if you remember back to channel mixer no sorry. If you remember back to colour balance, there we go. Got cyan, magenta and yellow. And the opposite of these, red, green, blue. If we go back to selective colour, if you increase the cyan, magenta and yellow, you are therefore decreasing the red, yellow and blue. And you can do this for the individual shades in your artwork. And of course, whites and blacks. There you go. Last but certainly not least is the gradient map. Now this is another big favourite with a lot of artists because the gradient map is another colour based adjustment. Now if we look at what it actually does we have a gradient along here black to white and if you notice, the black stopper, if I move it, here, at this 0%, this is where 0% of the blacks are. Further that we go along, 20%, that's 20% of the darker pixels in the image, and so on and so on and so on. 50% of the darker pixels in the image are now black. Now by relaying a gradient along here, we can completely recolor the image in colors, depending on where the darkest to the lightest pixels in your image are. And it's always worth having a look for which trippy effects you can create. There's always something that surprises you. Now more often than not, this is used simply to add a little bit of colour and filter to your image. Because when you're to the blend mode, you can apply the colour. Soft light is particularly good for this. Multiply, also an option. And screen. We're going to use soft light. And you can really have control over retaining your image with specific colours, which is nice. As you can see, it gives it a completely different feel. And it's quite subtle because you've managed to retain every single colour of this shade in this point, if that makes sense. And of course we have noise gradients.
and those gradients always throw up interesting options. We're just going to go for a simple black to white gradient. Darkest pixels in the image to the lightest pixels in the image. Set to soft light. All it's going to do really is increase the contrast. So let's just move this a little further. You will notice this is similar to actually moving the stoppers in a in a levels adjustment. You can diver and you can reverse. And there we have it. That's a quick look at the adjustments with what you can do with them, where you can take them, and the use of opacity, masks, and blend modes. Hope this has been useful for you, and thanks for watching.